Hey guys, it's Stephen here, back with another video and an episode of the Transfer Target like it's summer all over again and we all have no worries and all that kind of stuff. But today I thought I'd talk about a little bit of transfer news because I haven't done that for a while and there was some interesting transfer news going around yesterday in particular. One about strikers and a little bit about Angelino and the other day about a little kind of mercurial winger that Manchester City are about to sign. Now, uh, spoiler in advance, these players I didn't know loads about until I did some research about them. So, I mean, which is, at least I admit it, compared to some people who probably just pretend that they did. But we're going to start initially with Pat Sindaka. Now, of course, I've heard of Pat Sindaka. Everyone has. But have I watched him regularly? No, of course I haven't. I've not watched RB Salzburg play an awful lot. But according to latest reports, um, City Scouts believe that a 22-year-old striker should be considered alongside the likes of Haaland and Mbappe as a potential striker for Manchester City Football Club. I mean, they are very, very big words. But they're very big words for a very, very exciting player. Now, um, allegedly reports suggest he'd be around in excess of 20 million. Uh, I mean, that's a bargain straight away, potentially, for uh, our replacement striker, if he is indeed worth the hype. I mean, his stats are really, really impressive. I mean, I was looking at him last season uh, in the 2019-20 campaign. you got to bear in mind, this guy was sharing the lineup with a certain Mr. Harland. You know, you might have heard of him. A pretty good striker. Now, despite that, despite having to share the goals and the limelight with Harland, he scored 27 goals in 45 minutes, which is an incredible Genuinely incredible return, and he's just getting better. Now, the 22-year-old so far this season has got a combination of 12 goals and 5 assists in just 11 games. They're Harry Kane-esque figures. Now, of course... Um and of course, that's over in the Austrian Bundesliga, where RB uh, Salzburg absolutely sweep up at the moment. But they are still figures to be very, very impressed by. And what I can tell from this guy is that he's genuinely... Um a breakout star, potentially. I would love Manchester City to sign a breakout star, like a proper next breakout star. In the way that we've signed Torres now, in the way that we signed Gabriel Jesus, in the way that we signed uh, Sane and people like that, um, I'm not against them. Sometimes I prefer 20 million signings to 60 million signings. I know that sounds kind of weird, but City have got this kind of habit of buying the ones who are very good and about to be world class, but they'll never really, rarely sign the ones who are like a lot cheaper and then end up costing us about 90 million the next time we try and sign them. And passing Daka, from what I can see, I mean, I've done the, the thing that we all do where you go on YouTube and you scout him and all that kind of stuff and you watch his compilations. <laughs> he's good, guys. He's genuinely good. I went very pet then. Guys, he's good. He's good, you know. Uh, he genuinely is very, very good. Um, what I really like about him is that blistering pace. I mean, the comparisons, obviously, because he's from the uh, continent of Africa and all that kind of stuff, will be made. But he really does have a little bit of money about him in terms of that explosive pace. Though he is more of a striker. Uh, he has that kind of hustle as well, Gabriel Jesus. I would love to sign a striker um, with that link-up play and that drive and that electric, blinding pace. And people have also compared him to Aubameyang a little bit and Sam Leto. I mean, these are very, very high-level comparisons. Uh, and philosophically speaking, I would like to see to sign someone like this simply because... Um well, I guess he's not much of a risk at the same time. Can he be Aguero's successor? I mean, who can be Aguero's successor? We are going to have great difficulty trying to replace someone like Sergio Aguero, given the fact that, you know, he's literally a generational once, once in a lifetime kind of striker, one of the greatest the Premier League's ever seen, possibly the greatest Manchester City will ever see. So you can't really step into those boots. But what you can try and do is find someone who's going to bag you 25, 30 goals a season regularly. And this guy's record, I mean, so far he's got six and five in the Bundesliga and over in the Austrian Bundesliga, of course. He's got a couple of goals in four Champions League matches so far this season as well, which is pretty decent. Um, he has the pace, he has the goals, he has the work rate, he has the potential, he seems to be improving. And he has this really um, exciting, instinctive finish, a natural finish. The way he kind of, there's one goal particular I saw where he kind of like, kind of flipped up and like half followed it into the top corner. Well, no, it was a full volley, not even a half volley. And it was just absolutely mesmeric. And I love that pure, instinctive finishness. I mean, if he was something like the next Aubameyang, uh, you, you, you sign him, don't you, for cheap now. You get him before someone like Dortmund do, you know, before, I don't know, who is before basically someone like maybe even Liverpool do or something like that? You get him before they become a 90 to 100 million pound player. So I'd be all for all this. I mean, City have got a massive replace job in trying to replace um, Aguero. Personally, I don't think City will get Haaland. I mean, it's just a gut instinct. You certainly won't get Mbappe as well. I can't see that either. They just don't strike me as Manchester City kind of signings. I would love. Absolutely love to be wrong, but someone like Pat Sindaka, maybe? Imagine a future where you've got Pat Sindaka, Gabriel Jesus and Liam Delap all battling out for striker spots. 
Seems pretty nice, doesn't it? Seems pretty nice. This is the kind of signing as well where Guardiola's like, I want that guy who was, you know, ex Salzburg. Oh, you're thinking about Haaland. You're like, oh, we got you one. It's uh, Pat and Decker. He's like, what? That's not what we were meant. But anyway, I'll be very excited about his signing. A little bit of news as well is we're about to, allegedly, according to Fabrizio Romano, and this seems pretty much done as well, according to the local press pack, you've been saying, City been after him as well, sign. Um, a young lad called uh, Philip Stevanovic from Partizan, an 18-year-old winger, one who was apparently about to sign for Manchester United over the summer. But for whatever reason, it didn't happen for them. And now the deal is really close. It'll be around €8 million Euros then, of course, with your obligatory add-ons, um, with an agreement uh, with a player also very, very close. I mean, what do we know about this guy? He, um, he's an 18-year-old winger, turned 18 in September. He has been playing regularly for Partizan, which is impressive, of course. He's been playing at a good level. He's been playing in Europe as well for Partizan. Um, so he's obviously got a lot of experience already. I mean, if you're playing in the Europa League and you're playing, uh, you've been playing since 2018 and you've only just turned 18 as well, obviously it means you've got an awful lot of experience and he's been rep representing Serbia's under-21s. Um, I've done the, I've done the uh, obligatory YouTube watching because once again, I can't pretend to be a regular watcher of Partizan. You know I mean? Who, who, who is really? Who is really? But what I've seen of him is highly technical I mean he's one of those City football group signings that seems to have a little bit more you know what I mean obviously we sign a lot of these players and you never really know if they're going to break through or anything like that but this guy does seem to have a little bit extra a little bit something different obviously he has all the experience already um a really tricky player, a really skillful player, good turn of pace, uh, a small, basically your typical like kind of five foot seven ish. I mean, he might be a little bit taller than that, but that typical like those no, five foot. According to Wikipedia, he's five foot nine. So your typical small, nimble, uh, very skillful winger, uh, and he seems to have a real mentality as well. Very determined in games. I mean, I'm all for signings like this as well. I mean, they're, they're pretty much. Uh, the risk free really aren't and we'll probably sell him at least if we don't make any uh, inroads into getting him to the first team uh, and I'm fine with that largely but this guy is a goal scorer he's tricky he's hard working he's already got loads of experience maybe just maybe um, we're signing a potential gem here or he could be the next Patrick Roberts and end up going alone everywhere um Never making it to the first team. I don't know. All I do know is I'm not against the idea of signing someone like this because uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, and finally today, I want a bit of talk about a bit of Adderall Bio news. According to Peter Rutzler from The Athletic, I haven't read the article, unfortunately, because it's behind a paywall, which I haven't got anymore. Um, Adderall Bio was sold because he didn't want... Uh, sorry, he didn't have a buyback clause because he didn't want an Angelino situation, which is interesting. I mean, obviously... Adderall Bayer wouldn't have to join Manchester City even if there was a buyback clause. So he wouldn't have to, you know, like even if City activated it, he could go, no, I'm not going. He doesn't have to sign anything. But what I guess, um, what I guess he means by that is largely, uh, it's very easy for City to try and sign a player if there's a buyback clause. It doesn't necessarily mean they really want to. So I get where he's coming from. He, want, he said he wants to go back. Uh, if he does go back to City, because both parties want it. Uh, so... Even if City did try and sign Adderall Bio for a buyback clause, they could just want him for a backup squad and not use him, like Angelino found, you know. So I guess what he's saying here is that, no, I'm sorry, if City want me, they'll break the bank for me and they'll actually use me and it won't be a risk. And to, to be honest, I don't really blame him. In terms of the cynicism, I don't really blame him personally because... Um, it's like, I guess young footballers are getting, kind of, they kind of get include up to City's ways with these kind of things. And Adoro Bayo, uh, I mean, I'm happy for him so far. He started really well for Fulham, but I'm happy for him to try and forge his career elsewhere. And if City go for him, so be it. I'm gutted. I think Adoro Bayo is a really good player, but I understand entirely where he's coming from personally. I think, as, a, as I said, Plenty of times on this channel already. I think we massively messed up in terms of the transfer fee. I think it was embarrassing. We should have done much better than that. But it is what it is. And Adam Abayo, I totally and utterly respect his wishes on that front. So, guys, um, there's a little bit of a transfer target roundup. I mean, it's all kind of exciting, really, isn't it? If we sign someone like Stevanovic and maybe we have someone like Pats and Dacke, it'd be interesting. Let me know what you think of these two players down in the comments below. And, of course, what you make on the Adam Abayo situation for now, though. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Love you all loads. Hope you enjoyed the return of the transfer target. And I'll see you very soon.